Right, we are back here and finally it is not raining, so we're going to get the roof on today. We are going to use 18mm OSB free roofing boards as recommended by the rubber roof manufacturer. We are also going to use Lumberjack 5 minute wood adhesive, it's a polyurethane glue, it's 5 minutes to go off under normal conditions but under the stairs conditions it will probably be more like half an hour. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to use this Makita circular saw to rip the Ooh, to rip them down. We're going to use these Pazlord IM350 Pluses. They are brand new. We used them yesterday for the first time. Um, we're going to use them again today. And we're going to fix down with 63mm ring cut nails. Are they 63 or 62? 63 ring cut. Can you see the rings on them? Can you see the rings? Touch the square. Touch the square. Yeah? Right, so the rings, what the rings do, when you drive that in there, the rings get a grip on the wood, I suppose, and they're hard to pull out, which means no movement on the roof, which is what you want. So the roof is 5 by 2 C16. Um, it doesn't need to be C24. It's a little roof. Uh, it's more than sufficiently strong enough. There's three of us sat up here, and it's not moving nowhere. We'll board it. Snow low will be absolutely fine as well. Anything else to say? No. Um, we've cut the trees back, so what we're going to do is very much like laying a laminate floor. It's easy and it's pretty much foolproof. It's tongue groove board, so what we'll do, that part over there is the groove, that part is the groove, so we're going to start in that corner, we're going to work that way, groove to tongue, we're going to glue the joint, we're going to nail it down, we're going to tap it into submission with a piece of wood and a hammer. We are then going to take the off cut from over there and place the off cut there and go and the bum 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 like that and 40 minutes later we should be done, shouldn't we? Yes. Then we'll have we're going to do it uh, not quite real time because that's just a bar fest, isn't it? Yeah. Um, if you've got any questions or anything you want to see, I know a couple of you asked last night, would we do the full first and second fix electrics, Adam? Adam's now rolling his eyes. Um, we will we will do a full first fix and full second fix electrical installation right up to point of consumer unit in house as well Adam yes yes Adam is in house electrician he's currently are you 17th edition or 18th what are you now 17th and a half he's, he's, he's 17 and a half edition for all you sparkies out there so he's nearly there he's nearly he's nearly at the dizzy heights that you lot are i've done the course but i got covid so i couldn't do the exam and i'm putting it off <coughs> liam's harassing me to do the, the exam so there you go how long ago did you have covid adam march march <laughs> this year was it yeah. right so when do you think you might put in for your 18th edition definitely june this year yes I've you, you know it's june next week yeah I know. oh okay Right, okay, so Adam's gonna film. I'm gonna cut, Jenny's gonna fix, and apparently I'm gonna glue as well and fix as well, yeah? All right, Jenny, any questions, Jenny? No, Liam. You sure? Yeah. Right, have you got your PPE on today? Yeah, I do, my correct PPE. Leggings are not correct. Right, okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna use this first board, we're gonna get it into position. I'm gonna slide it back, Jen. What I'll do, um, Pass us that other pass, Lord, and you have one, please, as well. Um, Jen's going to stay down that end there, and she's going to make sure it's not hanging over at the back. The, 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 um, the groove is going at the back, but by the time we put our fascia on that, the groove will be then lost as well. Right, Jen, I'm good here. What are you like? Flush. You flush? Yeah. Right, so Jen's flush, I'm flush. What I'm going to do is exactly... The same as when we boarded the floor with the Ager. We're going to mark these timbers because once that next board goes into play, we don't know where they are. Right, so that board's semi-fixed. It's not going to move anywhere. What we're going to have a problem with this is this conifer, but if I cut too much of it back, they don't grow back very well, do they, Jen? Nope. 1,137. Right, so... What we'll do, I'll use this board here. 1,137. Yep. 1,137. I'm gonna use 1,137. I'm gonna use my tape measure as a straight edge. I don't know if you've done this before. But you hook that on there, pull it tight. There you go, there's your straight line. Okay, the saw is set to the depth of 20 mil, which Jen's just set it. I'm gonna slide that down there. 
going to push these back a little bit, Jen, if you'll step off that one. Yep. So I can get Sarin. And take that guide off there. These circular saws, um, the new to us, we bought them the other day, they're absolutely brilliant. A lot, lot, lot better upgrade out there from the cheapy one we bought. The, the, the BT. Yeah, than the BT ones. Right, so what's happening now, if, if Adam comes over here, you can see this piece that Jen's measured and cut. Um, it's tongue and groove, so what's going to happen now, I'm going to get that in situ. I'm just going to make sure it, it's right and it's good, which it is. Um, and what I'll do then, I'll get the five minute glue. Right. Now, these boards, they're designed when they're glued to become one full board, which means, I know it doesn't say it in the spec, which means you can then join them, not over a joist like that one is there. Because, at the end of the day, if you think about it, once we've been up on this roof, and that is it, nobody... He's going up on this roof, apart from maybe a tree surgeon to cut this corner for back. Um, but I just want to show you something. There's your joint. There. Yeah. We're happy with that. Yeah. Right. I'm probably, what am I now? 12, 12 stone, maybe. Um, COVID weight's coming off slightly. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, we've we've stopped all that now. We've we've progressed. There's new one is so what we're gonna do. <laughs> so what we're gonna do, right, you're off cut then, tongue that side, groove that side, which will go into that tongue. This one's gonna go over there like that. And drag that pass load down. I know where it's going. Our building is completely square, um, as I've shown you in another video. But if it wasn't, what I'd do, I'd overhang that. I'd, mark it underneath and then cut it off to make sure it was right. The roofing boards seem to go together a lot better than the flooring boards. It's pushed straight in, Jen. Right, so you can see the line there. Obviously, I can't see where the joist is anymore, but because I put a line, I know where it is. Yeah. Right, so I haven't nailed at the end, and if you watch the flooring videos, you know why I've not nailed at the end. Can you see that pulling up, Adam? Yeah. So if you nail it at the end, you're obviously compressing your board down to your joist. When you come and put that board in, it won't slide in as easy as that one did. But as long as you've put your marks there where your joists are, then it doesn't matter. Once you get that board in, it's glued. Then you can pin there and pin there as well. Um, and that's it. So basically, cut, off cut, cut, off cut till you get to the other side. What will happen now is I'm thinking this is a full board. Jen, what are you thinking? You don't. Right, um, it's not, you're right, 2,274, right, you need to go from the other end, oh, yeah. yeah, Jen is going to cut this board, 2,274, Jen, right, so what we've done, Jen's cut that, the off cut was like 100 and something, so uh, she's let it fall, knowing full well we don't need to use the off cut, haven't you, Jen, yes. so what we're doing, because it's so small, we're not going to bother using it, um, and we're just going to put another full sheet in there. So what I'll do now, I'll glue this. You should be able to see now how easier these go together rather than the um, the Eger Protect. This glue does not come off anything. So you need to be kneeling across it, especially when your trousers are ridiculously priced. Um, so what I'm going to do now, if Adam... Got trousers that we wear. It's only retail. Adam, are you watching? So this should slide in quite easily now. Yeah. Right, it's gone in there. That gap's good. I can see a little gap there. So what I'm just going to do is just kick it like that. There you go. That's in. in? Yeah, I'm in. Sure. Can't you feel it? That's fine. <laughs> Pass this nail gun, please. Um, Jen, will you mark up where Joyce said? Don't stand in glue, Jen, like you just did then, please. It's not that. It's if you start standing in glue, then you walk it all over the roof and clean up just take twice as long then. So, 
I've ne again nailed it to there, not nailed it to there because then this new board's going to go in nice. Right, problem we've got now is we're starting to run out of space on the roof, so what we're going to have to do is push everything back towards Adam. They're going to lay in glue then. Um, we could do if we had like some spacers down to pack it, but that means one of us getting down off the roof, doesn't it? We'll be alright till we get towards end. Right, you on there? Right, and push that that way. And then push that that way. Whoop. Right, Jen, tell me when it's right on end. You good? Yep. Right, so that's a full board. We never used the off cotton there because it's too small and it's not worth using. Um, I'll now glue this. So what we're going to do after this then, we're going to start insulating um, and then what I might possibly do is talk about hybrid roofs. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Um, right, that one's glued. Jen, just pull it in. Are you in? Yeah? Right, if it's not quite in, which it's not in great, I'm going to put this block on there, but I'm going to sit it on there. If you sit on there, you're going to smash the tongue off. So you want to sit on there, is that better? Right, watch this one then. Is that better? Right, pop a nail in that corner there, and I'll do the same over there. So what's happening with this board? There's a slight sort of movement in it, so she's going to pop a nail in that corner now. She's going to use Pazlod with gas in though, because that one without gas doesn't really work properly. So, yeah, right, hold it now. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to belt it here, because it's pivoted on that corner now on that nail. So, there you go. Pop one in there, Jen. That's what she wants. Where? Over here. <laughs> right, don't stand in glue. You just did look. You did. No, you did. Right. Right, like I said, it, it, can I have some nails, please, Jen? The glue doesn't come off, it just wears off. Um, off. Obviously, Jen's got quite the head of hair. Right, what I'm going to do, so she doesn't cut through the other board, because it is set a little deep, I'm just going to put that, that over there and let Jen cut through that now and that'll be fine. Is that the good gun? There's glue on the gun! No. There is! You put, Leah, that's from you putting it down. She's right. Where, where, Over look, there. Look you. Where you put it. Right, stop blaming me for that. Look behind you. You put it in that. And at what point did I blame you? I just said there's glue on the gun. That's Can all I said. Just say you've got glue on no, the gun? No, I said there's glue on the gun. What you did just, I say, Adam? You've just know. said, you've Re just said. Rewind the video? Yeah. Can I have the gun with the gas, please? <laughs> So maybe, maybe. Ah! <laughs> hold on! Yeah, you put it over there and it was left there. <laughs> right, what Jen's done, she's gone round and she's flattened all the joist hangers and the twist nails just to stop any lift on the board. What you want to do before you put these on is just check the tongue groove because it's quite thin and they get damaged in transit. So, as Adam says, there is a national shortage of timber, a worldwide shortage. So what will happen, we don't know. Timber prices are going up constantly. Cedar has gone through the roof. It's like equivalent to gold, isn't it, Adam, at the moment? Right. Win? Right, just now. That'll be his roof. There's a 75 mil pitch on it. It's three inches up to, uh, to nothing over three meters, which is enough at roof. Um, we build this front wall higher. 
We let it slope to the back. Are you done? Yep. Woo! It's the sound of the police. You ready? Three, two, boom. <laughs> Three, two, boom. <laughs> boom! Right, is yours pulled out, Jen? Yeah. Right. Right, you pull it in, I'll try and nail it. Perfect. Right, do you want to nail that up? What I'll do now, it's our last piece now, so we'll get rid of this off cut. It's of no use to anybody. Um, what I'll do, I'll cut it to length first. 1123. Right, so to answer some of your questions, I'm going to try and answer them um, on video rather than typing them out because that is where it is. Uh, it takes ages. Uh, we did go over to Milwaukee nail guns, didn't we? First fixed Milwaukee nail guns. I didn't nearly fell off that step ladders then. Um, but it was cold and they worked and they're heavy and cumbersome but they do fire constantly so we've now jumped back over to Paz Lord because it's warmer now and they work a treat in the warm weather so that there is fully nailed now what we're going to do now is get a hammer on that there Jen and just send that one home so that's it that's the full roof done what we'll do now we'll get all the crap off the roof we'll go for some breakfast we'll give it 20 minutes see if that glue's got off and then we will clear the roof of the glue, sand the roof, get rid of any burrs, any spikes. We've got the rubber in the, ru in the, in the van, so we're going to get the, the rubber up as well and we're going to bond that down. Don't stand that glue, please, Jen. And then, uh, don't stand that glue, please, Jen. <laughs> and then, and then um, you may forget what we're going to say now. Then we're going to bond the rubber to the roof um, and then that will be completely watertight. We haven't got the faces and soffits with us, but what we'll do, we'll pin the rubber down there with some slate lats, just stop any wind lift. And then we can jump inside, start insulating. Adam's going to first fix the electrics, aren't you, Adam? Yeah, and then we'll start insulating it. Uh, we'll put on our masks to prevent any insulation going into our lungs because we have all the safety gear, don't we? Glasses, masks, gloves, knee pads. Come here. Come here now. Come here. <laughs> right, we're ready. Yeah. Right. So the, the roof, um, the roof is on, the glue is drying still. I'm going to jump up there in a minute and start prepping that for the rubber to go on. In the meantime, Adam, our in-house electrician, is going to explain to you from start to finish, and this is the start of it now, his first fixed electrics, which first fix means basically he's going to get the cables in and get them to where they're going. Second fix is when he puts the switches and the lights on. So that's your first fix and your second fix slightly explained. Um, over to you, Adam. So first of all, we'll find out which way our doors have sliding which they are going that way One finger operation. this this build is it's only three meters wide so our, our doors are pretty much taking up the front wall so instead of having our switch just there on this wall we're going to go on this wall so i've gone outside had a look see where it's going brought my cable up drilled holes through the joist to inside so that's first bit in here then we want a position where our lights are going. So what we do as a standard is 700 off each wall. So a 700 square and make a mark on the wall. So 700 there, 700 there and 700 on each, on each corner. Then what we do is ping, I've pinged a chalk line. I don't know if you can see that Jen already. I've pinged a chalk line straight across. And then, as a rule, we kind of try and keep it 700 square in as well. So I've gone 700, see if it will fit inside this bay, which it does. So we've gone 700 there, 700, checked it in that side and we've, it's clear. Then measured the room, which was 3,120, and I've deducted 1,400, which is the 700s that are already there. What was left on that, I think it was like 1,700 or something like that. I've halved that. So from my first wall, I've got added my 700 to whatever half of that was and brought it today, it was like 1560 in the middle of the room. And you can see where I've put my center light there. We're only having six lights in here, so it was, it was quite straightforward. And that will be also 1560 from that side. It's a measurable bend. So that's 1560 that way as well. So that I know that that's perfectly in there. They're all, all the same and they'll all look uniform round. Um, 
lights running wise, we like to get our insulation as tight as possible up to the ceiling. So obviously clip it as tight to the ceiling as possible and drill our holes through the noggins there. I ran out of clips here, so it's a bit loose. Because <laughs> Liam had took the van and it had the clips in it. Um, drilled holes along, just obviously a daisy chain all the way along, through the middle, back through the joist until you come to your last light and you've seen where it goes to the switch. That's your last light there, modelled by the lovely Liam. And that is setting out your lights inside a garden room. I'm sure we'll get some sparkies giving us some smart remarks, but it is what it, it is. is what it is. It is within regulations. Um, so the reason why we push the cable up is because we're going to do a hybrid roof. I'm going to explain a hybrid roof to you. Um, I know that some of you are completely against it and some of you think that yeah, it could possibly work and some of you are completely warm roof or cold roof brigade. But the fact of the matter is, it does work. Uh, never had a problem with it. Uh, John's showed us one in that he's built in his house, his garden even. Three years later, the roof is as dry as this one is above our heads today. So we will explain hot and cold and hybrid roofs to you. I do understand what they all are. But this is what we use, and for those of you that like to follow us, then you'll know that we're staunch believers in the hybrid roof. We're not making anybody do it. Yeah, exactly. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Exactly. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But if do you do want to do it. Do a cold roof, do whatever yeah. you want. It's up to you. It's your money. This just works for us, doesn't it? Yeah. Look into the eyes, look into the eyes, the eyes, the eyes, not around the eyes, in the eyes. You're under. When I say hybrid, you say it works. <laughs> Three, two, one, you're back in the room. Right, so the OSB is down, we've used the five minute glue, we've waited about half an hour for it all to go off, as you can see, it's gone off sufficiently. Um, we've got loads of bits of OSB sticking up here, so what we'll do is, once we've used the multi-tool to get off all the craft, all the access glue, we're going to use the sander and that bit there, you see, just get all little bits like that off so it doesn't protrude through the rubber. And that's it. We're going to use the orbital sander. With it's got 120 grit in it. So we'll start off with that. See what I go on. <laughs> Jen's been round with the sander. She sanded it. She's multi-tooled all the glue off. All the burrs are off. We've then gone round and we felt the full board. Um, you're obviously going to get some deviations in the OSB. It's just the nature of the laminations on the material. But we've got it as flat and as smooth as we can. We don't want any burrs sticking up where these nails have gone in. Um, we don't want any bits of crap left under it because the smallest little bit of crap under your rubber will look like a pebble. Um, so you want to get it all cleaned off. We've used the blower to blow it off and all. Um, probably one of the best bits of kit that we have. Uh, no end of uses and clears customers gardens really well as well when there's all sawdust everywhere so what we're going to do now adam's going to get the rubber he's going to bring the rubber up and right, so the rubber comes in three different sizes i think three different widths 3.9 i think it's 4.4 and then six meters of summit so this being a three by three build the roof is slightly bigger than that so the 3.9 will be sufficient enough um It'll have creases in because that's what happens when it comes. Summertime they drop out, winter time they don't drop out so much. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get it into position. Adam's put them up there and they don't come up till, till last gen. I don't want to tell him though. <laughs> he might shout at me. He does know. Right, so just watch I don't shove you off there. I'm going to unfold that like that you can see the crap that's in it Jen what we're going to do we're going to stretch it out we're going to blow that bit off because otherwise it'll get trapped under the roof then does that make sense yeah right he's going to get some petrol foot blower right you can see the crap on there can't you we don't want that crap on there so what we're going to do we're going to blow that off before we unfold it see there look a little stone Did you see it now? You see all the rubbish there, look, yeah? So what we need to do is blow that off. Basically, what they do at the shop, they roll it out on the floor, they measure it on the floor, then they fold it up, and of course, there's any crap on the floor, which there is, because it's a warehouse. It then sticks to the rubber, and then comes upon the roof, which we need to get rid of. Um, Adam's going to fill the blower. He's also going to... 
Right, what I'm going to do now is cut the rubber so it's more manageable. I don't know if Jen can see, we're hanging over about 700 mil at the front there. Wow. Yeah, you can see that, can't you? No, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go for it now, Jen. Um, I'm going to cut that off like that. And then if I cut it off and it's more manageable, then we can roll it up. And I'll show you how and why we're going to roll it up. Um, decent Stanley knife blade will cut through this. No problem. So I'm going to go all the way around the building and leave myself a decent overhang. Probably about seven inches there. Maybe a bit less, I don't know. So the weight of the rubber will hold it in place because it is heavy. Um, I've cut it off so it's the right distance all the way around. What I'm going to do now is roll this side back so we can glue this first. Now the way I'm going to do that is roll it once like that. Jen's going to try and do that side for me and film at the same time. Right Jen, what I'm going to do now, look, if you can film this, look. I'm going to then create a roll. Just, just film. I yeah, go on. Just get like right, that's it there. Right. You ready? Yeah. So I've created a roll. What I'm gonna do now is generally let go of that. I'm just gonna roll it back and it will roll like a carpet. As soon as I can get onto this side, I'm then gonna step onto this side. Um, and I'm just gonna roll it like that. But before I do that, Adam can't blow her. You see, it's just a constant battle with this crap on it there. So what I don't want to do is roll that crap up into, into it. Right, so that's half it rolled. I'm now going to blow this off again. Right, it's a water-based adhesive. Um, we don't use the contact adhesive around the edges. And I've explained why we don't before, but we don't. Um, you want me to explain it to you? Right, so what, you, what we used to do, we'd glue it and we'd leave a 100mm stripe all the way around the perimeter of the building. And then you'd use a spray contact adhesive. Like, um, So we used to do that, that was fine, it was really messy, it was a pain in the ass. If it's not gassed off properly, it used to get bubbles appearing and stuff like that. And then a rep from another rubber roofing company rang me up and he told me some prices over the phone and I said to him, I went, how much is your contact adhesive? Because I knew how much it was in my mind. He went, what do you want to use it for? And I went, well, still edges, that's what you're supposed to. And he went, well, what's the point? And I went, right. And then he says, you're gluing it down with this anyway. He says, you're going to mechanically fix it with your P-trim on the edge, you know, the plastic trim that goes over the edge. He says, so how the hell is it going to even come up? If it comes up, he says, you've got a major problem anyway. Yeah. And he's right in what he says. So this glue, um, especially today, like today now, this will go off pretty rapid. Now, I put one of these on before, customer decided he didn't want the garden room where we built it. Literally, <laughs> stripped it and moved it, like, from there to there. But that's what he wanted, that was fine. But anyway, we should set the roof up. We'd only glued it down the day before and we couldn't pull the rubber off the roof. It's that good a adhesive, yeah? So, it's water-based. So what I'm gonna do with that in mind, I'm not gonna use contact adhesive because I am a maverick and I'll do whatever I want. No, seriously though, it made sense when he told me not to use it and I thought, do you know what? He's trying to sell me it. If he were going to sell me it, he'd try and sell me it, wouldn't he? So, I'm going to do a stripe that wide. Um, for all of you that are screaming at home, you're back, you're back, your knees, get a pull, get a pull. Um, <laughs> I know, I know, I hear what you're saying, but this is just... I like doing it this way. Keeps me active. Right, so I'm going to put a stripe all the way along like that. Plenty of glue on it. You don't want no... Did you see that then, Jen? You don't want no blobules like that. <laughs> blobules. <laughs> you want to make sure it's all evenly applied. Sun's coming out now, which is unbelievable after all this week of rain we've had. Right, so that's like that. It's evenly applied. What I'm going to do now, it says to let it tack off. Other companies say don't let it tack off. What do you do? We don't let it tack off, exactly. <laughs> so, because when we've tried to take it up previously, doing it this method it's stuck like the proverbial yeah so we'll get it to where it wants to go there I'll still leave a bit and what I'm going to do now is just brush it like that won't be able to really tell on this first part because um, we've only glued it a bit but once I do two or three lines you'll be able to see what I'm doing with that brush so again I'm going to go sideways on the end like that because if you go like that roller goes over and off you go um, Adam 
sun's come out, man, it's absolutely burking. Right. So I'm going to glue that all the way down there, make sure I'm getting it right under there where that original line was. That, that's like two rows of glue now. You might be able to see a bit better what I'm doing with the sweeping brush and why I'm doing it. That'll go there like that. If Jen just steps back over there. So I'm going to roll that there again. Right, what's going to happen now, Jen? I don't know if you can see. You see that bubble there, look? Yeah. Can you see it? Right, you can't see on camera. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to expel all the bubbles and all the creases, like that. Um, you can't really see them, can you? Yeah, can you see that bubble there? Yeah, so what I'm going to do, look, if you just see now, look, you see how I brushed it out? Can you see it's moving to the end there, look? So what you want to do is brush it to the end, get rid of it, see you later, off you go. Right? So what I'm going to do, that rubber's rolled just a little bit too far, so I'm just going to peel it back like that. <laughs> and then I'm going to apply another line. So that last line there will be the last one on this piece of rubber, and then I'll explain how we're going to get the other side glued, what we're going to do with it. Right, that's that. So jump across onto there. Roll that out now with brush again. There you go. And expel any bubbles that are there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to think of that. What is it? Expelliarmus. <laughs> right. So that, there. Look. Can you see they've gone as well now, Jen? Right. You see there how it's not sticking down? Yeah. That's because it's not glued from there onwards. Can you see that there? Look. Can you see that? Can you see it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Can you, can you see it now? Right, when we roll that back there, there'll be the smallest little bit of pine needle under there. <laughs> and it just creates a massive ridge. Really annoying. Right, you can see now I'm rolling this back. And I don't know if Jen can see there, look. All them pine needles that have fallen down. So we want to get them off. Where was that little one that we've seen? There. Can you see it there, look? Right, so let's... Ex Let's export. I know they're not pine needles, whatever they are, conifer needles, need, conifer leaves. Right, so there, look, that's how small it was, look. <laughs> yeah, so it only needs to be a right little bit to cause you a lump. <laughs> right, just stand back a minute, please. Right, so what I'm going to do, right, just see if you can get close with this gen now, right? So it's literally, it's only been glued like 15 minutes ago. Can you hear it? Pulling back. <laughs> you hear that? That's. So whether or not you're going to let it tack off, I don't know, but that to me is bonding. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I've pulled it back a little bit so that I can get another stripe on. And then that bit that we've just pulled back off the glue, we can stick back down and then it's all good again. And then we're back off going this way with the stripe. That makes sense to you, Jen? Right. Big cheese. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure I glue it right up to the rubber there because we've already pulled it back like a couple of inches. Um, I want to make sure we've got enough glue on everywhere. So it's Bank Holiday Monday this weekend. Yeah. Ooh. Well spotted. Right, so that's a, that's a new stripe going that way. What I'm going to do now is just get the brush again. No, I can't. And push that there now, and then where the joint was, I'm just going to make sure, give it a really good brush, like that, and then that glue will have bonded back down where it was. So that's the full piece of rubber there. Um, I didn't show you that, that last bit simply because uh, Jen had to blow all the rubbish off the roof while I were gluing it. Because as soon as you touch them conifers, they all start to shed. Um, there you go, that's the full piece of rubber on now. So for all intents and purposes, that roof now is watertight. Um, it's one piece rubber roof membrane, I think. It's the, the, 
the, the smaller grade, I think it's 1.2 is it, but you don't need anything more than that. They're factory joints, you're going to get them, they're as good as that, they're never going to leak, and you're also going to get that writing in there. If you think it's upside down, roll it over and you'll see it's on the other side as well, because I've been there and done that. <laughs> um, we built one under a flight path at Leeds and Bradford Airport, and I was going to get a big massive awkward garden rooms thing on it, because the planes come right over, and they were really low, and you've got to see it when you come into land. Should have done it, shouldn't I? What we're going to do, I've um, I bonded the rubber down to the OSB. Uh, we've not put our soffits and fascias on yet, but because it's rained so much recently, I'm going to get the rubber on, get it watertight so that if it rains, we can still work inside. So what we're going to do now is just offer this slate lat up. I'm going to bring it right down to the bottom of the 5B2, and then I'm just going to tack it in like that. It's just to stop any wind lift pulling the rubber up off the roof before we get a chance to put the fascias and soffits and P trims on it which will then hold it down permanently. Um, yeah don't put the nails all the way in because they're just harder to get out. Um, that's more than enough. That wind will never do that now. What I'm going to do now is just fold that round that corner like that. I'm going to put a slate button down there, one down the other side and one up back and then that's the roof bonded and watertight until we come and put our fascias and soffits on which will be another day. Is it video? Mm. <laughs> right, the worst job of the build is without a shadow of a doubt insulating it. Um, you can wear glasses, you can wear a face mask, but it still gets in every single crevice of your body. Doesn't it, Adam? Yeah. Right. Okay, so I'm going to explain hot and cold and hybrid roofs and all that malarkey in a minute but first of all i'm going to put this bit of insulation up adam's marked the light there that's where the light's going to go you see that oh that's very well marked it's well marked in it it's almost like you're a professional he's also run his one mil cable there which will then go to the light like so so what we want to do we want to push our insulation up tight to the underside of the osb therefore preventing any air gap therefore preventing any moisture building up with the air um, I'll explain that in a little minute though. Right, so what I'm going to do first, um, I'm going to take that stupid thing off. Right, so I've marked the light there. That's the centre of the light. I'm giving it 100 mil all the way around. So that's going to pop up like that. Right, so what I need to do is cut that square out. Can I just pop that on there? Thank you. And one more time, please, Jen. Right, that's the light for the square. The light well, there's a hundred mil clearance all the way around. The what? That's the light for the square. Right, that's the square for the light. Square for the lights. Hundred mil all the way around. What I want to do is when I put this up, we're going to utilise that off cut that we've took out there. So I'm just going to put an arrow there, which indicates it points this way because I want it to fit in as snugly as it comes out, which is like that. Right, that's going to go up like that, but we've got a problem now. We've got that cable there. So what we're going to do, we're going to get our knife, and drop it in like that, and like that. Pull that bit off there. The cable then runs to the centre of the light, so I'll score that. Pull that out as well. Right, so what we've created now is a 100mm PIR for the ceiling. It'll go tight to the ceiling, the light cable will run there, it'll run there and it'll drop into that light there. Um, I'll just show you that going up, it should fit. Just going to put these on because it does go everywhere. Right, Adam come here, can you see that? Right, so that's gone up. Can you see there, look? It's tight to the OSB. It's up tight. What I'm going to do then is get my square. Where's the square go? The square is there. I'm going to cut 50 mil or so of that off. Like that, I'm going to get myself some nails, if Adam's watching, still, if you look here, there's the arrow, look, pointing the arrow that way, then I'm going to send that up there, 
<laughs> that's now sealed the hole. I'm going to then put them nails in there to stop it falling down at any point in the future. And what will happen now, your light will go in there, that will sit in there, we'll cut this plaster board out and that will go in there. There is no air trapped above there, so therefore there is no air to condensate when it meets the cold air which touches the roof. It's the same practically as Kingspan panels, roofing panels and six panels. It's exactly the same. Um, this air here will be ambient hair, air, 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 air. This air, this air here will be ambient air at ambient room temperature because it will be just above this plasterboard. There'll be also a vapour barrier going over there now as well. Now the vapour barrier, obviously we're going to count for the lights, but I don't know how anal you want to be about this, right? But when we put the vapour barrier on there and we count for the lights, when it's been skimmed and that plaster looks dry, when you put your finger up on top of there, you feel on top of the vapour barrier, it's dry. If you put your finger in between the vapour barrier and the plasterboard, it's wet because that's the job the vapour barrier is doing. Even though there's a hole there for the light, it's not wet on top of the vapour barrier. Put your finger in between the plasterboard and it's wet and it's moist because it's doing its job. So, so that's, that's it, that's your, that's your hybrid roof and it works. So I'm not persuading you to do it. You can just do whatever the hell you want, but that's what we do and it works. I've given up.